Welcome to Diligent Canine. In this video, I wanted to talk about optimal stimulation or arousal uh, as it pertains to different dog activities. I actually just listened to a podcast, uh, Stacey Barnett's Sensibilities podcast, that talked about this very idea, and I didn't want to steal the idea, but I had the opportunity to see the principles talked about in that video um, the same day that I listened to the podcast actually um, displayed in my own dog so I thought that was really cool and I wanted to make a video to share that and explain that so just to recap what she talks about in that podcast episode she talks about stimulation and the relationship between stimulation or drive if you want to call it that and performance in a certain task and how there is a point of diminishing returns as stimulation increases, performance increases, but eventually as stimulation increases or the complexity of the task increases, then the performance of the task actually declines. So um, what you have then is a bell-shaped curve. If you imagine um, a bell <clears throat> that's hanging and has two kind of S shapes falling off a high point or a peak statistically speaking that high point or peak would be your mean it would be the average number and most people will fall within uh, certain margins of that bell or, or certain data points will fall within the margins of that bell so a really common example would be IQ the average IQ is 100 most people will have an IQ, so if our average is 100, most people will have an IQ between 90 and 110. The vast majority of people will have an IQ between 80 and 120, and a relatively small number will have an IQ below 80 or above 120. So what this means for dog training is as stimulation grows and that our task, task stays simple, performance increases, but as complexity grows or we become overstimulated, then our performance starts to decline and down the other side of the curve. <clears throat> and breaking this down into some examples then, um, something like obedience training, simple household obedience, sit, down, stand, um, might be um, really hard to get too much drive into. So the more energy and enthusiasm your dog puts into those behaviors, the better they perform those simple behaviors, right? So when I want my dog to be super stimulated to sit or down, it's boom, boom, boom. His butt hits the ground, his chest hits the ground. I call him to me and he rockets across the yard to sit in front of me. Those are simple behaviors. There aren't multiple strings of action that need to take place. It's usually one action for one command and more energy, uh, when there's more energy or more drive or more stimulation from the dog, they just put it into those behaviors. Works out pretty well. Now, the example that was given in the podcast was that um, detection is not a simple behavior, um, particularly when talking about sport detection, uh, certainly professional detection, um, and all the complexity of stuff that the dog has to navigate um, to complete the task, com complete the search command that you give to the dog. So um, I'll tell you about what, what I witnessed with my own dog, and again, it was just really cool to see um, literally the same day that I listened to the podcast episode, I came back from driving um, to the gym and then was training my dog and saw that stuff happen right away. So I was doing some interior detection searches and uh, of course on a leash, I've been working on patterning with my dog Dean and uh, the session was going pretty well. So I decided to take him off the leash and just send him uh, just send him into the room as sort of a test so I could see how his patterning is working when I'm not gesturing to things, when I'm not moving um, 
the start the start location around at different points in the room. Um, I'll talk more about that stuff in my detection vlog, which is on Patreon, by the way. Um, <clears throat> but I took him off the leash just to kind of assess and see where he was at without a handler being next to him and without a leash on his neck to kind of like be a stopgap for his pace. What happened? Well, Gene is a Shepherd Malinois mix. I would say that he's probably probably average drive for the breed um, or for those breeds, probably actually a little low. Um, he's laying right next to me now, so I'm, I'm kind of lucky that he is a pretty chill and, and mellow dog and will lay down, but God help you if you if you pick up a ball or start to wave around a tug or something like that, then, uh, then it's your typical full throttle um, high drive dog kind of behavior. So uh, we'd been training, he knows the game, he's amped up, he's ready to go. Um, I put him in a different room while I set up the hide, bring him into the room and send him on the search. What happens? He goes kind of crazy. Um, his motioning around the room was still pretty good, but he just bebopped really fast, kind of sporadically, um, and, and there really wasn't a pattern to his search. There was a direction to it, but what I noticed right away was that he immediately went to the places where I had placed the most hides. So that would be my box setup or my bookshelf um, or this bookshelf. And that happens to be because of how I can stagger hides and things like that. But the point being, he was overstimulated and immediately just went to the locations that he thought were gonna be the most productive or that had been the most productive in the past. And the reason, the way that I know that he was overstimulated is because that lasted for about 10 seconds, maybe 20 seconds or so. Then he slowed down and became much, much, much more methodical in his searching. So once the initial burst was over, and he just bebopped around from, uh, well, not random areas, but areas where he was guessing with his brain that uh, hides were going to be. Then he started using his nose. Then he started using his training and became much more methodical. Now, again, the, the patterning wasn't perfect, but this is a really neat example for me to see that more drive, more stimulation uh, is not always the answer. Sometimes dogs can be overstimulated, particularly with complex tasks like detection, and their performance in that task declines, and they actually need to come, come back off of that curve a little bit. They need to be a little less stimulated. So rather than trying to amp them up, 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 um, you might have to reel them back a little so they can focus on, on the task that they're doing, right? So I don't want my dog to try to think ahead of himself and guess where a hide is going to be. I want him to use his nose, use his skills and use his training, which is a little bit of a different approach because I had been of the mindset that um, building brakes would be much easier than building horsepower per se in the dog. And for the most part, I think that's true, but, um, this is just an example of where where it's not maybe not not true, but it's not quite true um, uh, yet. It's not true yet where the dog's ability to tolerate that stimulation and still perform well it's not there yet. So that's going to take training and it's going to take time and patience and something that has to be built up to. So. Just to recap, in the last minute or so here, um, bell-shaped curve of uh, optimal stimulation and performance in a task. The more simple the behavior, the more difficult, I believe, it is to have an overstimulated dog because the, trans, uh, the energy translates very directly into the task at hand and it's performed very enthusiastically. However, as the dog becomes more stimulated, or, and or our task becomes more complex, it's easier for the dog to be overstimulated and then our performance declines because the dog uh, is overstimulated and not able to focus 
on the task at hand, right? They're going a, a million miles a minute. In human terms, we would call this mania, hypomania. Um, you got too much energy, you're not able to focus on the task at hand. So thanks for watching. Remember to support military and working dogs by subscribing on patreon.com slash diligent canine. <laughs>